Biology class is over, and I'm done taking notes. But as you can imagine, I have more than one class, and I'll need to take notes in the other classes. In some apps, that means creating a separate file. But you can imagine how after just a few note-taking sessions, that can quickly become unworkable. Other apps create separate files to hold your notes, but then try to present them as a list, which also doesn't work as you accumulate lots of notes. Notebook solves the problem of keeping notes organized by using a notebook metaphor. The documents Notebook creates look like paper notebooks with pages and sections. Everyone has used a notebook to keep their notes and other information organized, so it's a very familiar and intuitive way to keep notes organized on your iPad. If I tap here in the title bar, I get a list of pages in this notebook. Let's take a look at the contents page. The contents page is a list of all the pages in the notebook. A notebook maintains this list as you add and remove pages. I can create whatever sections and subsections I want to keep my notes organized in a way that makes sense to me. Here's the page of notes we just typed. I said that they were for biology class, so let's rename the section to biology. Now I'm going to add a divider and name it English because that's my next class and then a page for the notes. Next I'm going to add another divider and call that math for my math class. OK, let's head to the English class. In English we're reading the novel The Heart of Darkness so I'm going to rename this page. Now for English I like to take my notes on a legal pad so I'm going to change the paper style to legal. Usually when a page contains notes, I tap somewhere on the page to make sure no notes are selected, and then tap the inspector button in the pencil bar. There are lots of different ways to customize the look of your pages. Now English isn't my strongest subject. I do try to keep up and take notes, but it seems I always miss something. What would be great is if I could take notes and also record the person speaking, so that I could review the meeting or lecture and see if I left something out. Well, with Notebook, you can do that with its voice annotation feature. Let's start recording. Hello, today it's Heart of Darkness. And you can see the meter level here next to the icon, so we're recording. And let's start taking notes. You'll notice that where the pencil used to say number two, it now gives a value. Notebook is telling us how big the voice annotation file is getting, so that we can keep an eye on it. OK, now class is over, so let's turn off voice annotation. Now Notebook went back and for each note I typed during the recording, it adds a voice annotation sticker, which is kind of like a timestamp into the recording. So if there's some spot where I think I might have missed something, I can touch and hold the voice annotation sticker. Here Notebook is saying I started typing this particular note 15 seconds into the recording, and I can start playback from that spot. The plot. The story's main narrator is Marlowe, a Now I can go home and play back the meeting or lecture to fill in parts of my notes, and not miss a single detail. Two more things for English class. First, the teacher talked about the relationship between Kurtz and Ivory and the darkness, and talked about how they were all connected, and drew a diagram to show that relationship. Now I could write that down in my notes, but really I'd like to put that diagram in my notes. I can do that with Notebook's Shapes template. I'm going to drag out a shape for Kurtz. Now to get a shape, either tap it in the template or touch and hold until it pulses and drag it out. And then one for darkness. And in fact, to emphasize darkness, I'm going to select the text and make it white, because I'm going to fill the shape with black. There are lots of options for customizing the look of shapes. I'm going to choose the fill color and make it black. And then I'm going to drag out a shape for ivory. And then the teacher drew lines between the shapes, so I'm going to drag out some lines. Now I have the same diagram that was in class. If you want to select multiple shapes, touch and hold the first one, and then tap additional shapes with your other hand. The shapes and lines you add to a page live in something called the overlay, which is like a clear plastic sheet that floats over the page. 
It turns out I need to add another item to my notes, so I'd really like to focus on my notes and get the shapes out of the way. I can do that by tapping the Hide Shapes button in the Shape template. When I do that, Notebook pulls the overlay up and over and out of the way. My teacher mentioned an assignment, which I need to make a note of. It's a book report that's due in two days. Now I'm going to give this item a due date. I can go to the Margins pane in the Page Inspector and turn on the Due Dates column in the left margin. Or I can touch and hold in the left margin to get the Attribute column popover. Next I tap in the left margin next to the Book Report item to set the date. Now this is an action item for me, so I'm also going to give it a checkbox so that I can check it off once I've completed it, and also set it priority to medium. One last thing, I'm working with a classmate on this report and I'd like to have his contact info handy. I touch and hold in the stickers column next to the item and tap the plus to add a contact sticker, which is a link to my classmate's contact info in my address book. Now his contact info is attached and available whenever I need it. I'm all done adding notes, so I'm going to bring the overlay back down. Once I add some shapes to a page, Notebook makes sure that the shapes stay aligned with the text underneath in the outline. That means if I scale a page, the text in the outline won't rewrap and the page becomes larger than the screen and I can pan around the page. In Notebook, the primary way to turn pages is to swipe left or right. Now I can't do that when the page is larger than the screen, so before I turn the page, I'll scale the page back down. Before moving on to the math page, I'll just swipe back and add a sticky note. Let's first remove the shapes template by tapping on the star, and then tap the picture button in the pencil bar and tap stickies. Just tap to add a sticky onto the page, or touch and hold until it pulses and then drag it out. Double tap and start typing. To remove a sticky note, tap the note and then tap it again to get the editing menu and press delete. Alright, so my next class is Math. For Math class, my teacher put today's class notes on his website. I downloaded them and added them to my documents. This time, I'm going to choose the option to add it for annotation. When I add it for annotation, Notebook adds each page in the PDF as a separate page in my notebook. Now I can sit in class and follow along with the notes. I can double tap anywhere to add a text note. I can also mark up the page by switching into drawing mode, which is the tip of the pencil bar. I have two controls here, a pencil and an eraser. I'm going to make the pencil larger and then change its color. Now if I want to circle this point, I can do that to call it out. Next I'm going to make the tip a bit larger and change the colour to a transparent yellow because I want to highlight this portion of the PDF. If I tap the eraser, I can remove part of what I've drawn. To exit drawing mode, tap the pencil tip again. I showed one way to switch pages by tapping here in the list. Another way to navigate the notebook is through page flow. With page flow, I can page through the contents of my notebook. So if there's a page I need to get to, I see it right there and tap it.